Welcome to Law Flip is another episode. I'm Benji, and I'm joined by my gorgeous producer, Ariane. Look at that face, okay? Phenomenal. So we're going to talk all things. We break some news around Bruce Willis, some really unfortunate news around Bruce Willis, mm -hmm. uh, some news about uh, Russia, how basically uh, his advisors aren't willing to tell him the truth. Putin is not getting the truth from his advisors. We talk about social media companies, the slap, of course, um, Travis Scott. I, I do a butchered version of his song, Sicko World. Uh, Alec Baldwin. Mode. The what? All good. Oh, you were going to just, you are going to pounce on me there. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, the billionaire tax, the mar marijuana legalization bill, some stories surrounding the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and much more. Everybody have an amazing start. No, it's not the start, the end to their week. And enjoy Pump this day. beautiful episode. Let's get into it. Law flip, law flip, objection, your honor. Turn, turn the game upside down. Law flip, law flip, objection, your honor. Turn the, turn the game upside down. Hi, everybody. Hey, hey. How are you? We're good. How are you doing? What's going on? Just another day. Another Just day in another paradise, day. as you always another say. Another day huh? in paradise. You know, it used to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Then it was <laughs> phenomenal. I've been hitting a lot of people with lovely recently. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried Pilates? No. I've tr so like working out is not even though I own a workout company. Right. <laughs> <laughs> working out is not something I love doing, but right. I've been trying to do the class pass thing, trying to do a couple of different classes. Didn't done doing boxing, doing the sickest boxing classes. Place I called saw your Fortune. boxing yes. post recently with our our boy. Pavel. Pavel. Who works at Microsoft. He's he's the man. But anyway, I've been if you haven't checked out that episode yet. Definitely go check out that episode on Lawflip. Yes, go check out that episode. So, uh, boxing, been boxing at Fortune Boxing on Melrose. It's like this cool, gritty gym, cool music. This guy who owns it, Justin Fortune, fought Lennox Lewis. He's teaching the classes. It's cool. I'm getting my ass kicked. It's great. And then I tried Pilates the past few nights, mostly females, but I've always considered myself a little bit um, beta. No, I'm not. I'm a tough guy, but I go to pilates now and it's exciting so there's a few breaking stories i want to get to so before you get to that i just want everybody to appreciate that i didn't take a hit at you when you just said that okay. <laughs> hey i was giving you a layup there <laughs> okay so let's hop into the story so breaking as we come on putin and M russian strike that putin and russian ministry of defense have persistent tension so a u.s official provided nbc news with declassified intelligence claiming that there is persistent tension between Russian President Vladimir Putin and the Russian Ministry of Defense, allegedly because Putin's senior advisors are too afraid to tell him the truth about Russia's battlefield failures. Are you surprised about this? Dude, that shit's crazy. Why? That's fucking insane. Why That's is the it surprising? president of a country that has like the A-bomb. Yeah, but everybody like like I don't think that like like a military advisor is being afraid to tell uh, you know, the president, the truth is like very uncommon. I'm not saying it should happen in but... like third world countries, but <laughs> like not in Russia. I don't know. I don't think people were too excited about telling Trump the truth. But yeah, yeah, this yeah, is um, true. Good point. This is just coming out. I mean, I don't I, I, I see it as like breaking news, but I don't really see it as being that surprising. The other brutal news that is coming out of Hollywood is childhood hero Bruce Willis stepping away from acting. Um, his daughter wrote a Instagram post, Rumor Willis, basically explaining that he's come down with aphasia, which I actually haven't heard about very often at all. Do you have any knowledge of aphasia at all? I don't. I, I have some understanding that it's it's comes from uh, brain trauma. That's, yeah. that's all I know about so it. So I just, you know, th basically the Instagram post is talking about how he's stepping away from his career that's meant so much to him. And that's a challenging time for their family. It's just amazing. This guy was like, what's the, your favorite Bruce Willis movie? I mean, what was the, uh, you're, you're not going to remember this movie, but obviously um, his main movie is a uh, die, die hard, die hard, the die hard like series, the most legendary movies. And then obviously uh, his role in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Um, and then there's uh, the last boy scout was amazing with Damon Wayne's uh he was just he's just like was just the toughest guy and to see him struggle with health 
just makes me super appreciative of like every day. I don't know why recently I'm just so freaking appreciative of health. And um, another thing to note about this was that this Instagram post like included Demi Moore. And I just thought about the fact that they're actually one of those couples that really have been a great like role model and example for co-parenting and having like what appears to be a healthy relationship after getting divorced and having kids together. And so uh, I just, I don't know, just made me think about that and um, it's admirable. And I'm just, I'm super bummed for him and his family and God, I hope, I hope he somehow has a, has a turn for the better. Um, moving on to uh, sort of our other topics. So when you were a kid, Arian, and you were a kid when Instagram came out, how old are you now? I'm 21 now. So Instagram came out in around, like I remember coming out in 2010-ish. So that means you were eight years old? 2010, I'd be nine. Nine, okay. So were you on Instagram as a kid? I, I didn't even get my phone, I think, until middle school. Okay. Or I think, no, must have been like like fifth grade when I got a phone. And like, were you on Instagram? And or? I think I think I downloaded Instagram. Are you liking Instagram right now? Am I liking Instagram right now? In what sense? Like, do you enjoy social media right now? So I have this. So I downloaded this new app. It's called Be Real. Uh -huh. Okay. You get a notification. Yeah. You have two minutes to post. Um. All 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 it does is it takes a photo from your front facing and rear facing cameras. Mm hmm. It, uh, uh, you can't add any effects. There are no likes. There are no followers. You post it. Okay. You have friends. Your friends could see it. And there's a discover. And you could go and discover anybody else's shots. That's kind of cool. You could comment. And you can react with pictures of your face. Okay. I'm on that app for maybe five minutes a day. Okay. I get to check in with my friends. I get to communicate with my friends. I get to see what they're doing. And because you get notified at the time of day... There's no bullshit. There's no setting it up. It's real. You like you just be real. Okay, well that's you're not real. yeah, that's and not normal that social media. Is an app that I highly recommend you go get. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of parents are going to be wanting that and, and they're also going to want to be they're also going to want to be suing social media companies. So, a new California law will allow parents to sue so social media companies. I always like another opportunity to sue people. So, the bill would essentially hold the social media companies accountable if the apps prove to be harmful for children. Assembly Bill number 2408, also known as the Social Media Platform Duty to Children Act, would hold the companies accountable if they prove to be harmful to children if they prove to be harmful to children. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so it basically says that if if the, the apps or any portions of them are developed, designed, or implemented or maintained features that were known or should have been known by the platform to be addictive to the users, every single app is designed. Can I tell you what this is? Yes. This is the new tobacco company yes. bullshit. Yeah. Like, it's just never going to happen. It's just never going to happen. What? They're lawyered up. These media companies yeah. and these these tech companies are lawyered up the same way Big t Tobacco is lawyered yep. up. And they're just never going to be held accountable ever. It's a tough one because I basically completely agree that social media, yes, the positives are it allows you to be, you know, sort of creative. It helps you promote your business. But like all in all, it's a pretty like brutal negative place. And I could just see even with my son, like I asked him what he wants to be. And he's at a YouTuber. I was like about to jump out the window. <laughs> I was like, and wait, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> are you a YouTuber? I guess you are. Oh, You're God. I'm a TikToker. Apparently, I'm a TikToker. You're a TikToker. Check out my, I now have, I'm sorry. I don't even understand this. I have one TikTok that has half a million views. I'm getting like tons of views on TikTok. People are shit talking me. It is, it's like. I really have to. It's a great place to bully Benji. It's a great place to bully Benji. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't know. I basically, I actually think that there needs to be checks and balances on these social media companies because they are, they basically take the greatest engineers and scientists in the world and figure out how to make us as addicted as possible to it. So there needs to be some sort of balancing on this thing. Um, okay, so a just really quick take. You know, our Taylor, uh, I'm going to let you finish moment of the generation, the slap. 
Okay. The slap. I'm not like everybody has a take on it. I'm not really interested in anybody's take. The joke wasn't even that funny. It was just it, the whole thing. I, it, it's like you're it's, interested in one person's take. Well, I, I was telling you that Jim Carrey, I was actually like, I've always like looked at Jim Carrey as like being this incredibly funny person, but I like really deeply troubled and 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 just like in pain, like trauma all the yeah. time. But I saw him commenting on this. It was like the most sober, like sort of like analysis that I've seen come from right. him. And he basically was was just saying how um, he was sickened by the standing ovation that Will Smith got when he won. Hollywood is just spineless and mass. And it really felt like this is a really clear indication that we aren't the cool club anymore. And just he was basically saying that if he was uh, Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, Chris Rock, he would have sued Will Smith for two hundred million dollars. Right. And just like really he's like, I don't have anything wrong like against Will Smith, but it just was fucking insane. Yeah. And I don't know. I just thought I, I thought it was cool to see him. I think the angle he took was like was like the defamation. Yeah. For Chris Rock. They, like like that to just be standing the, there and then yeah. and then to come and get bitch slapped in the middle yeah. of a fucking in the Oscars. Fucking wild. Yeah. It's it's uh you're well, I'm, it's a it's sort of rhetorical question, but who's team are you on in the will smith chris rock debacle you know you know i know a lot of people that are supporting will smith okay a lot more than i personally feel that i would yeah so you don't really support i mean like the thing I is until I, that like, moment like, i've always like, looked at him as like this incredibly inspirational un- and by the way his act he did deserve that uh, that that oscar performance was unbelievable but it was like a little bit like he came out as Richard Williams that night. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, okay, so Ariane, when I tell you, when I say she's in love with who I am, back in high school I used to bust it to the dance. Now I hit the FBO with duffel in my ha- duffels in my hands. I did half the Zan, thirteen hours tell a land how we act like a light. What do you what do you think when I say that? I think, oh God, please make him stop. <laughs> <laughs> but that is like one of those like epic rap lines in the past like five years that just when it comes on anywhere, yeah, everybody, everybody even knows. though I just like completely butchered it. And also the TikTok, it. it was like viral on TikTok for a minute. That oh, was switch. it. So yeah, that was the, that was like, that's like the famous Drake line from Astroworld, Travis Scott. And he's on stage again, Travis Scott. You know that? Is he really? He performed at like an Oscars Beverly Bel Air like mansion party. He performed like a small set, which included the Sicko Mode song. Um, and there's also an update on the Astro World case. This is going to be talk about a blockbuster case. This is going to be just insane. Um, but he basically, ahead of all this litigation, has created this thing called Project Heal, which is a $5 million initiative that includes funding for an effort to address safety challenges for festivals and large scale events. So on the one hand, like he's doing something positive and like if he wasn't doing this, everybody was would be bitching. On the other hand, people are saying, hey, this is just a PR stunt poisoning the well for any jury pool to make him seem like a more sympathetic person. What's your take? I mean, you said it right there. If 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 he is poisoning the litigation against him, like and it's it's just all a defense then like are you really helping anybody if you're just not going to be held accountable Fuck yeah that. i mean it's the problem is that it's like what can he do what can he do to actually i think like the only thing i could think about that would make him anybody what happy is like literally here's my financials i am worth a hundred million dollars here is 99 here's it in the pool i need a million dollars to survive and now like i'm gonna go make a new living off of new music that not, that like all my wealth it goes to all these people i will i will take recommendations from everybody on how to uh you know be a better person going forward and i'm going to work on this project heal but i think this just looks like a drop in the bucket for him he probably has like people paying these costs for him i don't know yeah yeah you don't yeah. no no strong opinion no, on it? no 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 additional take okay fair enough you know why let me let me let me, let me tell you why Cause fuck this guy. Yeah, I'm not That's a fan. It. I'm I'm not That's a fan. It. Look, when that song comes on the club, am I gonna sing it and dance yeah. to it? Yeah, absolutely. But have I heard from people very close to him before this 
and even through today that he is an absolute nightmare to work with. He's just a cocky, irritating guy. Even just just that one time where that kid came on the stage and was trying to take a picture of him from like a festival and he embarrassed the kid. He's just an asshole. Yeah. And I just, yeah, not a fan. Don't fuck with assholes. Okay. Some new updates on the Alec Ball one case. So our our most viewed TikTok to date and most commented TikTok to date is definitely the Alec Ball one case. People are going crazy on there. And so the newest, uh, the latest breaking news from this case is Alec Baldwin denied culpability in the killing of cinematographer Helena Hutchins and said she should not, he should not be held financially responsible. He claims that his contract protected him from financially being responsible for her death and he sought coverage of his legal fees, basically arguing that it was not his responsibility to determine if the guns had lives around in it. Strike that. He's arguing that it wasn't his responsibility to determine if the gun had live rounds in it. So this is a and in his was it res- his responsibility legally? I look for, as an actor. If he was strictly being sued as an actor, uh, it's hard to argue that his him being an actor and being handed a gun, he's supposed to do much of anything. But like at the same time, if you know that you're using a real gun who the hell wouldn't kind of check to see if there's anything in there? I, I don't, I still cannot understand. And this is like the, the, the most common comment on there. How on earth in 2022, do you have a real gun on set? It's the, it's the craziest thing I repeatedly hear about this case. And so anyway, one of the things he says, he's, he's basically, you know, like we said in the previous episode, which is, he says it's a rare instance where the system broke down and someone should be held legally culpable for the tragic consequences, but that person is not Alec Baldwin. So he's basically saying it's not my responsibility; it's somebody else's, and uh, I shouldn't be. Res-. He's basically suing uh, for indemnification for the other people involved to be paying for his legal fees and all that, which is not surprising whatsoever. When you're in a lawsuit, what people don't understand is if you're suing, you try to go for every pocket. When you're being sued you try to go for every pocket in the sense that you don't want to pay it you want to find anybody else that could be responsible for paying it whether it's the insurance company whether it's your partners whether it's your um uh whether it's the you know the production company you know people say oh don't sue don't do this but when you're in the foxhole and your financial well-being is on the line uh your tune changes a lot and you end up you know doing things that maybe you've criticized others for in the past, but uh, yeah, that's just, that's, that's the, that's the update on the Alec Baldwin case. So, Arian, how do you feel about taxing the rich? Fuck the rich, tax them all. So why? Because effectively the poorest Americans put, pay a higher tax rate than these billionaires. Well, no, a lot of poor Americans don't pay any income tax. But between sales tax and the costs of living yeah, and but, but, all of that, an effective percentage of their money goes to the government at a higher rate than those of billionaires. That's probably true. So if so, if the poorest Americans, at the end of the day, 25%, 30% of their income is going to the government, mm-hmm. so should then the uber wealthies. 20 percent 30 percent fair enough income. and you know joe biden was actually listening to you and he proposed a new 20 percent minimum billionaire tax so as he should <laughs> so it's called the billionaire minimum tax minimum income tax it would assess a 20 percent minimum tax rate on u.s households worth more than 100 million over the half the revenue could come from those worth more than one billion dollars that's crazy so um I don't think this is ever going to pass. Uh, I do think that the ultra rich uh, should be taxed in a way where they isn't paid. it a tax for less than like a thousand people? Probably because you know just just Elon Musk and Bezos, I think own like a, an incredibly large percent of the wealth of the world. Um, so we're not talking about a lot of people being affected. And um, the funny part about this is like I just see like people who for sure will never be affected by this, like in the South. And right. Shit. That's my question. So is it, is it mostly like 
the lobbyists for these like thousand or so like uber rich people that are that are, that are that are like lobbying the government to, yes, to not it's pass also it? like or is it like this percentage of like Americans of, of Americans that are like that don't have that money and are just waiting for the day they're they're rich. I think that although there are more millionaires than ever, I think that like this is nothing new, but this is like people that are poor always have the American dream of becoming rich and they vote. It, they don't vote for their current circumstances, particularly like a lot of like the moderate or, you know, sort of conservative Republicans they vote for the hope that they're going to be rich one day and they don't want to be taxed. So, I mean, I just see people, you're not going to take my money, dude. We're not coming for your money. <laughs> We're coming for Bezos's money, not yours. Right. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. That has no chance of passing. But I know, uh, Ariane, uh, we're about to be able to have a spliff anywhere in the United States. Did you know that? I, w I did not. Yeah. So basically, the House is poised to pass a bill legalizing marijuana. So the House is poised to pass legislation this week that would legalize marijuana. Just the latest example of the swiftly changing attitudes on drug laws that make a near reversal of the you know Reagan era war on drugs. Dare? Did you ever have dare in your schools? We did have dare. Uh -huh. um, I I don't like to make light of this. Just yeah. a little story that I want to throw out there. Okay. Our dare officer uh, got into a drunk driving car accident. Uh huh. And was arrested. And so that means that you should do drugs and drink because you're <laughs> Dave, because that's that's evidence that you should. That's the that's that's exactly. no. If you just need evidence that like programs like that don't work, fair is enough. That our dare he didn't officer say that he wasn't going to do drugs and drink. He just was <laughs> telling you that. Um. Anyway, so. Um, Anyways, now on my rolling tray, there is a dare sticker. What's a rolling tray for those who don't know? <laughs> okay, but by the way, I have to make I have to make this. Uh, I just saw this great uh, meme or something. So Madison Cawthorn, he's like this, like you know, he's like this Republican guy, uh, oh. congressman, and he tells this story about how he has seen like Insane. people around him do key bumps which for those of you who don't know is doing cocaine off of a key and he's seen like been invited to orgies and i just like one of the these funny uh memes was like it's very rare that somebody who doesn't themselves do key bumps know what the term key bumps is right i bet you like most people <laughs> listening to this don't know so it's just like funny he's saying that there's for sure he's messed around with the nose candy yeah. a little bit um anyway back to this bill um this bill may actually pass because it has conservative support and there's just a whole sea change and like decriminalizing drug activity and everything. It's just like from a con I've never understood. And by the way, I have my own feelings about drugs in general. I, I want to do more drugs. I want to do more drinking. I just like, it's not enjoyable for me. Right. But the idea of, uh, pot being illegal and alcohol being legal has never will never the ever idea that like that like i could go and take 100 milligrams of gummies right now yeah and like live my life uh -huh. while like at the same time there are people in this country that are in jail for having like a tenth of what i had it's is it's, insane it's totally insane and um so it's possible the the weed we weed, weed bill becomes law but senate may put in some amendments um, okay, so just like I think I think as is, it's like a nice win win for libs. Yeah. Cause I think if it passes, then Biden has something for young people. Yeah. Like, hey young people, you can smoke weed now. Yeah. And like that helps him. And if it doesn't win, then like already the majority of people support like yeah. legalizing and it makes republicans look bad and it's like another issue for yeah. democrats to work but on republicans are coming around on it too i think bill burr senator bill burr uh was was okay with some version of this bill or something some other decriminalization so i think republicans are coming around too so all right how are you following the russia ukraine conflict like what what media are you looking at so i got the ap emails mm -hmm. it's like two or three emails a day Mm -hmm. um the, those kind of track like two or three new articles a day yeah it's kind of brutal i start my mornings off with <laughs> like with like straight up images of dead people i can't like, do it that has literally been like every yeah. single day for the past five weeks yeah um 
and it's terrible but i also feel that it's like really important that i take a look at it because like that is this world that is like this world that we are living on how many the first i'm sorry to interrupt you it is the first like war that i'm an adult to like fully understand what's happening i i i was too young for iraq i was too wrong for young for afghanistan like i didn't really understand what was going on in syria but like now that like i have learned things and and, and follow the world like a year wait how old were you at 9 11 i was uh, i was born in february and that was september september is what month nine Crazy. Okay. So a disinformation researcher shares what she and her team watch for when analyzing social media posts and other online reports related to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. They suggest watching for hacked accounts, fabricated claims, manipulated images, pro-Kremlin narratives, etc. So this is a great article. We're going to link to it. Everybody should check it out. It's very, a lot of the stuff is very obvious, but do you have people in your life that like, so there was an article a few years back about Fox News, like how how my family got sucked into Fox News and got brainwashed. And they have like these real accounts of like these people that were normal people. And then they watched Fox News and they became radicalized and they became different people. And I never really like, I don't know, in my day to day life, like I don't generally I come across people that are like brainwashed and radicalized to the extent that like they believe like Russia talking points or like these things like you know, I never believed that people would actually believe that the that the 2020 election was taken away or that like, you know, Russia's invasion was really to denazify Ukraine. But I've come around, I've come across people who really fall for this stuff. And this this article basically is a like seven tips on how to fact check. But what I've also noticed is that people that fall down this rabbit hole, they don't want to see this stuff. Like right. They, they don't want to know how to fact check. Like it's because they, they believe that it's part of the problem. It's, it's oh, part like of even the, the narrative. Fact checking, against, even yeah, the, the, even the, the uh, like the instructions exactly. on how to fact check is part of the like the the, the liberal ploy to, right. to get you to unbelieve it. Like they believe the fact checking is part of the messaging right. to like get them to not believe. I mean, and, yeah, and that's yeah. that's the problem. It's like it's like when you fall into that hole of like the world is against me. Yeah. And like once you believe that lie. Yeah. Then it comes it becomes very difficult to pull people. That's out true. Of because you can't have the like you can't have an argument in the same reality as these people because th- their entire worldview is different. That's the thing. Yeah. So this article basically looks tells you like, hey, like fabricated cl- fabricated claims and false flags, like how to spot it. Check for the source. Uh, like you, if you check the source, you'll you'll find out. You type the source's name if there is one into Google, and they'll be like, you know, the outlet is tied to a troll factory. Uh, so and then like you'll see other things like I've seen on TikTok and other places like where old media is circulating out of its original context. You'll see like somebody getting killed and they'll put a caption on it and it's really from like a war from 15 years ago there'll be like unverified reports and then like i think the the advice is be skeptical of content that has no material backing up the claim even if it was shared by someone you trust instead look for reporting published on news outlets like and and like i can just see like a southern accent like oh no 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 not like not the nasty no good mainstream media it's not even southern like this is the true uh immigrant experience for a lot of people like i see it within my within my own family john oliver i think we talked about this earlier john oliver did this the this incredible piece he Mm -hmm. did this incredible piece on misinformation in uh diaspora communities and it, it covers a true problem in telegram and whatsapp of of not even being shared videos on Facebook, mm. but this direct person to person communication of this disinformation, and like once it enters that like Persian family group chat, <laughs> you know what I mean? Once like once it's, it's real. in there, it's real. Like, hey, look at this thing. And What's it? What is the thing that you've heard recently in a Persian group family group chat or somewhere else that you know is just objectively not true and they take it wholesale. They just oh, believe it. Oh, it's everything. It is give me one literally ex- give me the best everything. example. Like, I mean, there's a lot of the QAnon. There's a lot no. of the QAnon. What, give me just give me the most extreme example. I want like know. like like I have people in my family that believe Trump is still president. No. Yeah. Yeah. He even says he's yeah. not president. 
Oh, because that's part of the thing. It's, it doesn't matter. They'll find. Yeah. They will. They they believe that he is, and even him deny. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They so, like they believe that twenty twenty election was stolen. Yeah. Like, ho- like, completely, completely. Completely. Yeah. Like it's it's not even a question. But if you ask them to like let's say fact check it, would they actually attempt to, or would they shut down the conversation? They would break. They would break. Break in what sense? Like, 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 uh, 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 right? Yeah, they just couldn't. They couldn't because it just it literally doesn't track. And then, like, and then you you start. This is also a reason why I don't have these conversations with them anymore. (laughs) It's like you start trying. Yeah. And and they just they can't do it. Like they can't take the step to give like to they can't give off one inch of ground. Mm Hmm. Because they know that topples the entire story. For right, them. right, 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 right. Because right, you right, could, right. like, you could literally just go to, like, hey, look at all these judges right. that Trump appointed. They don't care. They don't care. It's like, part of the, and like, they don't you know, care at all. Yeah, they don't care. Um, okay, moving on to legal tip. Your employer might be underpaying you. To find out if you are being underpaid, contact me today for a free and confidential consultation. We've all seen the slap, right? That was Will Smith slapping Chris Rock while he did the set. But many ordinary people like us, we're ordinary people. Um, no, but but many ordinary people uh, working jobs, they experience like crazy stuff in the workplace, right? You could be a server at a restaurant and you'll have an abusive customer spit at you, hit you, what do you do? First, you have a claim against the Karen or the Ken. Uh, Second, you may have a workers' comp claim, and you also may have a claim against your employer if the employer is fostering an environment where this type of thing could happen, right? So if if a random person just runs in and slaps you, that's not, there's not much that a, uh, an employer can do. But if they know that this happens often this is a rowdy place people are drinking you don't have security um and you're fostering that environment you may have a claim against an employer so if you think that you have any sort of claims whatsoever against your employer feel free to call us 1-833-LAWFLIP um it was a great episode we talked about all sorts of stuff we got a little bit of inside action on on Ariane's family group chat (laughs) And uh, we will see you next time, Lawflip.